Welcome back everyone to Morning Line. Now we're talking, as you see on the screen there, how a growing city affects homelessness and what the issue is in, in terms of helping these folks. Metro has the Homeless Impact Division and that's uh, their tasked with addressing this issue. With us this morning, two members, Judy Tackett, who is uh, the director, and uh, Jessica Ivey as well with the organization. So. Um, we've got a couple calls I want to take, but um, you know I, I want to get to you in just a moment, just on the numbers of people homeless. If you think it's getting, is it growing in the city right now? Like the question there, how a growing city affects homelessness? Just because more people are moving here, then the number you said 600 a few years yeah. back. You're out there doing another kind of census, if you will. That's going to be more, don't you think? Uh, we don't know, and that's kind of where we, as the Homeless Impact Division mm -hmm. of Metro Social Services, has ta have taken on our Homeless Management Information System, which is a database mm -hmm. that actually can also look at annual numbers. Right now, um, we are not able, that database is not able to produce uh, citywide annual numbers, mm -hmm. so we work on that. We just took that on to look at uh, get partners in there, get partners to enter uh, the numbers of homelessness, and then we can see what it looks on an annual basis. Yeah. Now, on a point in time snapshot, uh, with the very minimum, the very minimum, the last three years has been about 2,300 people that we counted uh, on one night in January, and it's been about steady, about the same. About steady there, yeah. okay. Um, but that doesn't include people that are doubled up or that are in motels or uh, right. that cannot be found. Now, in that time over the last two or three years, I know folks are working toward this, but has there been any substantial gain made or something being done that would address that to reduce the number? Now, or is that what you guys are saying, we desperately need to get on the ball and start doing that more now. What has been new that's been brought to the table to address homelessness? I'm not talking about the creation of a board, but I mean tangible. Are there some new places for them to stay? Is there some new treatment? I don't know. You know, what, what's new? See nothing, right? It's, it's the same, status quo. Well, I think the way in which we deliver services yes. has changed. Okay. So I think through the coordinated entry system, we've been able to really look at prioritizing those who are being served quickly. So really looking at those with the highest barriers and the highest needs, those that don't tend to go and ask for services, we're really trying to prioritize them for services because those are generally the ones that are kind of wallowing. The highest on the at risk. So yes, you're able to exactly. better identify them. Yes. So the, the problems there, maybe, but you're able to better identify who needs help first? Yes. Okay. And so then we're linking them with the services we do have. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing that has changed as well is we do have a bigger capacity now in which to enter information into our homeless management information system. Okay. So by doing that, we're not only identifying what it is that we have, but what we need. So we're also being able to start identifying gaps. And so as we continue to grow homeless management information system, it's going to provide us a lot of data in which areas we need to go into. So what's your biggest need? Biggest need right now is really um, resources, I think, yeah. for that uh, mm -hmm. database so we know where the gaps are. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and the other thing uh, is always housing, <coughs> the housing exits. Landlord incentives uh, is, I think, a, a key issue that other cities have um, yeah. figured out better than we have. Um, and thirdly, really look at a regional approach uh, at this point. I don't think Nashville, I mean, Nashville is booming. Mm -hmm. I don't think Nashville is, is all of a sudden having all these low income housing mm -hmm. opportunities again that we used to have a few years ago. So mm -hmm. let's look at this as a, as a regional issue. Those are the biggest needs. All right. One of the things when talk about new, I'm going at 10 o'clock to a grand opening at the mental health co-op for okay. kind of a psychiatric ER. I, where so is that? It's at the mental health co-op. Okay, and it, it really will help. Uh, I think before it was police, you know, when somebody had a crisis yeah. and police would get involved, they would have to uh, spend a lot of time and, and it, it became mm -hmm. a police matter. And this is really a diversion yeah. piece and looking at diversion, how can we keep people in house? So yeah, I saw that. Is it, mm -hmm. The opening is when? Is it? 10 o'clock 10 o'clock today, today yes. is the grand opening. Yes. I mean, I've yes. seen, I saw stories on that. Yes. that that's coming. Mm -hmm. It looks nice. Yeah. It's a nice facility. Mm -hmm. So that's a big deal. The, the mental health issue yeah. is crucial to address. Mm -hmm. And that's really looking at homelessness is not a cookie cutter a homeless person. Mm -hmm. Homelessness is a housing status. Mm -hmm. And we need to look at what the services are. I mean, people that experience homelessness have the same issues that people who are not experiencing homelessness. You know, we still need the services and that the supports that people need. And we need to just find a way to link people while they're still in housing with the needed supports to I remain gotcha. in housing. All right, let's go to Paul on line one. Good morning to you, Paul. 
Hey, good morning, my friend, hey. Nick, and good morning, good morning to your lovely guest there. <laughs> uh, Nick, I absolutely agree with you about Sheriff Darren Hall. I didn't realize he was uh, building that facility at the new jail that would accommodate uh, some of those issues there. He is a visionary. I agree with you 100%. Uh, Nick, uh, to your ladies there that come there this morning, do you know how I fall on these kind of issues, Nick? I'm very tender-hearted toward the poor and homeless, and I commend them for their work that they do. <laughs> it, 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 Dealing with that kind of issues, Nick, with the homeless is like pushing a boulder up a hill. It's a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And funding, funding and money, Nick, that's what it comes down to. You hit it. I mean, that's that's, it. You, you hit the ball out of the park. It's funding and money, and they, they're always kind of one hand tied behind their back on that. And uh, about a month ago, uh, they, you had a guest on there. Uh, a, lot, a lot of a lot of homeless people are panhandlers, and and and, and uh, they they sell those papers on uh, those uh, that paper that they sell and everything mm -hmm. uh, on the street. I believe also now that uh, there is a kind of a political little little thing going on here now that there's kind of a political thing going going against the homeless. People uh, uh, and look, but they're fear mongers and there's a lot of homeless people out there in Nashville. There is, Nick, there is. But there's a lot of homeless people in every major metropolitan city in America. And we gotta help those people. And and now I see I see that, that there's a, a little thing going on that maybe they want to try to get the homeless people out of the eyesight. They they don't want to see homeless people on the street anymore. And 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 uh, uh, so, so they're coming up with this ordinance to try to get rid of the homeless people on the street, and and instead of trying to really help them, Nick, and and I hope that these ladies, I commend them for their work and continue what they're doing, and because you know what, can't everybody get out and get a job, Nick, because they have a physical disability, a mental disability, and and we need to help these people as much as we can. And thank you for taking my call, and God bless you, brother. Thank you, Paul. Paul, someone with a big heart, and actually we're gonna have some folks on from the contributor on next week talking about that issue which comes down to panhandling I know that's a separate bill that uh, folks deal with but I think he's right to, to some degree um, first of all the fear mongering I don't know if that's a fair thing and I see where he's coming from but I mean because you're homeless doesn't mean you're a criminal okay and these are good people so keep in mind a lot of us are one or two paychecks away from being homeless that's all it would take we saw what was happening with the government shutdown and some of these uh, TSA workers mm -hmm. that yes. were like how are they gonna pay the rent yes and we have uh, on our team three outreach specialists mm -hmm. and uh, when they go into encampments a lot of times they don't find people because they're at work Mm -hmm. We forget about that. <laughs> People are working out there, you know. Oh, sure. So if they're in shelters, if the they're working they homeless, are. you yes. see yeah. that when you go and, and serve meals at the mission, the people yes. that come through the line, you may have some preconceived notion of what these people are like, and it is nothing like that mm -hmm. across all boundaries. You have people coming in there in suits, in suits, mm -hmm. okay. And I'm not saying they're taking advantage of something when they shouldn't. They just have one suit, and that's the one they keep clean, and that's what they go to work in. And yet they're homeless, and they're eating at the shelter because mm -hmm. they have no place else to go. It, it runs the gamut. So do not have preconceived notions mm -hmm. on who is homeless and who isn't. And another thing that Paul brought up that I really appreciate is um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily just a political mm -hmm. against. It's this whole nimbyism. Uh, I get a lot of calls from neighbors who are um, big hearted and want to help, but just that person that is in their neighborhood, they kind of want it gone. So we uh, just need to be honest to each other that people in our neighborhood, whether they're housed or not, they're our neighbors. I know. So let's help them in our neighborhoods. There's a reason they're there. So let's see what we can do. Where are the strengths in our neighborhoods that we can help people? Well, and that's the key. I mean, I think most people, if you ask them, would you like to find a way to help the homeless, would say yes. But if you ask them, would you mind having a homeless shelter in your neighborhood, would say no. And the thing is, I can understand that from a purely financial point. The bottom line is they should get help and they have a right to be there. But that's going to affect your housing values. It just is, unfairly or not, mm -hmm. it's going to. And so that there's the trick. It's like, well, I want to help, but not in my neighborhood. And you know, you have to find a way to get beyond that. One way, maybe where you can do both, not necessarily, you know, find something everyone agrees on, right? And it's one of the things you hear my accent. So I'm from Switzerland, Switzerland where it's like yeah. really we have this village. Uh, it's like it's more mixed. Yeah, a neighborhood is really mixed with poor, rich. Uh, and everybody living in a village setting. Okay. We need to think more that way. It's like, yeah. how do we do city planning? 
yeah. with, with everybody has. And, and it's like the value of the houses then is not going to be that much an issue right. anymore. Right. And it's, it's, it's more accepted. Mm -hmm. It gets along. There, there isn't a, a crime. Con there's not people on this. See, that's those, sometimes those preconceived notions that aren't fair. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where it comes. Listen, let's take a quick break. When we come back, Bob, Dina, and Pat, we'll get to your phone calls and more right after this.